Hi and welcome to Embedded Systems course, Prototyping with Arduino Uno. In this video, we're going to learn basic Arduino programming, its code structure, data types, operators, and simple conditions. We'll apply these concepts and work with the Uno board's digital pins. We'll explore some useful functions such as pin mode, digital write, and delay to control some output LEDs. So, let's begin! Arduino language is simply a set of C and C++ functions that can be called from your code. So, if you have a programming background in C or C++ or related programming languages like Java or C Sharp, it will be very easy for you to adapt in Arduino language. When you open a new file in Arduino IDE, you will have this initial code structure for you to start your program. It consists of two main functions, namely void setup and void loop. The void setup is the first to execute, and it is automatically called when the program starts. This is the area where you commonly initialize your variables, pin modes, and other libraries. This setup function only runs once, and it happens right after each power on or a reset of Arduino board. The loop function acts as the main function that loops continuously, allowing your program to change and respond. The loop function starts executing just after the setup function. Now, let us start working with the two of the most commonly used built-in functions when dealing with digital pins, the pin mode and the digital write. For this first programming activity, we will use three of the Arduino's digital pins as output. You can use any of the digital pins 0 to 13. So, in the void setup function, we will configure the mode of the pins that we want to behave as output pin before we can actually use it. Suppose I want to use pin 6, 7, and 8 as output pins, because I want to control three LEDs, and to do that, I will type pin mode, and I'll specify what pin I want to configure, say pin 6, then comma. Because this function accepts two arguments, the first one is the pin number, and the second one is the mode. We have three options for the mode, either input, output, or input pull up. For this, I'm going to use the output, as we want pin 6 to behave as output pin. I'll explain the other two in the next video. And since I also want pin 7 and pin 8 to behave as output pins, I'll copy-paste this code and change pin 6 to pin 7 as well as this pin to pin 8. Now, to actually send the data to these pins to be received by the outside world, we are going to use the digital write function. This function accepts two arguments as well. First is the pin number and the second is the value of either high or low. In digital systems like this, when we say hi, it means 5 volts or 3.3 volts in some Arduino boards, and low means ground or 0 volt. So I'll copy paste this twice and change this to pin 8 and pin 7. Unlike with most programming languages that you work with like Java or C Sharp, wherein you have a graphical user interface such as a console window or a browser to verify your program output, in Arduino, you will likely want to see your output in an actual circuit board. And with that, let us implement a circuit connection based on what we wanted in our program. I'll connect three connecting wires to pin 6, pin 7, and pin 8 of the Arduino board and place it on the breadboard. And based on our code, we want to send logic high or 5 volts to these pins to trigger these LEDs to emit light. To do that, I'll connect three individual resistors in series with the wires. I'll be using 220 ohm resistor for this, but you can use either a smaller or a bigger value resistor, typically up to 1 kilo ohm or less. This is just to limit the current that will flow through your LEDs. Then I'll connect the positive terminal of the LED in series with the resistor, and the negative terminal of the LED to the ground of the board. Make sure that you connect all the negative terminals of your LEDs to the ground of your Arduino board. Then, I'll connect the Arduino board on my computer's USB port, and we are ready to upload our program. When you click on the Upload button the first time, you will be asked to save your sketch file. You can select any folder that you want, give it a name, mine I will call it Embedded Systems 01, and click Save. You should see your IDE compiling, and if your code is verified and your board is properly connected, you should see a message done uploading. And as you can see, all LEDs light up. Let us modify our code and replace this high to low 
which means zero volt or ground. This should turn off all the LEDs. Let's upload the program again, and it works. All LEDs are now turned off. You can mix high and low values to whichever pins you want to send 5 volts or 0 volt as you want. Let me change my pin 6 to high as well as pin 8, leaving pin 7 to low. I'll upload it again, and as you can see, the result is reflected on the board right away. Next is the delay function. This function is fairly straightforward as it accepts only one argument. The value of the time delay is in terms of millisecond. And 1000 milliseconds is equal to 1 second. This parameter is of type unsigned long and we'll talk about the different data types in Arduino language later. You just have to understand that when using this delay function, the actual program execution is put on hold and will only continue after the time delay has elapsed. I'll copy-paste this entire set of code and I'll change all the high values to low and the low to high. You'll notice that there is also a delay at the end of this code and the purpose of this is to pause for one second before looping back and start executing again the code at the beginning of this loop function. Let us upload the code and there you go, you have an alternating light. If you remove this delay that put the code execution on hold, you will not be able to see the alternate light as this function loops very fast that is not visible to your naked eye. I'll change this second delay to 300 milliseconds so you'll notice the difference. Let's upload the program again and verify the output. As you can see, the middle LED only lights up for 300 milliseconds, much faster than the left and right LEDs that stayed on for 1 second. Now let me change this to high and this to low so you can see all three LEDs blinking. One important thing that you might sometimes forget if you are new to Arduino programming is that if you add another pin to behave as output, always make sure to set the pin mode in the setup function before use. Arduino will not throw an error message if you use the pin as digital output even though you have not initialized it in the setup function. Rather, it will give you some unwanted behavior. To illustrate this, I'll comment this code so it will be ignored by the compiler. I'll upload it. And as you notice, the three LEDs still blink, but the light is very dim. It is because of the internal pull-up resistor that is enabled by default, acting as a huge current limiting resistor. So I'll put the pin mode initialization back. Additionally, notice these words output, high, and low. These are what we call constants that are predefined in the Arduino language. They are used to make the programs easier to read. For example, you can replace this output constant with 1 and it will work the same. Output is same as 1 and input is same as 0. Also, you can replace this high constant with 1 which means 5 volts in Arduino Uno board. Same with this low constant. We can replace it with 0, which means 0 volt. And if I upload this program, the output will be the same. Similar to most programming languages, you can also declare variables in Arduino. Here are the list of data types that Arduino supports. The data type of a variable determines how much space it occupies in the RAM. Arduino Uno has only 32 kilobytes of flash memory for your program storage and 2 kilobytes of static RAM for your program execution. Be very cautious with the length of your code as well as when declaring variables in your program. You don't have the luxury of memory space just like in your desktop or laptop computers. For complete Arduino language reference, please follow this link. Int is the primary data type for number storage. In Arduino Uno, it stores a 16-bit, 2-byte value, a range of negative 32,768 to positive 32,767. The int size varies from board to board. For example, on the Arduino Due, int data type is 32-bit. So, we can declare an integer variable like this. int led1 equals 6, comma, led2 equals 7, comma, LED 3 equals 8. And I can use these variables and replace these numeric literals in pin mode function. 
as well as in the digital write function. I'll click Upload and as the program runs, you'll notice that nothing has changed. You still have the same output. Now, if you don't have plans on changing the values of your variables LED1, LED2, and LED3 as 6, 7, and 8 respectively, you can make this constant by placing the keyword const in the beginning. I'll use a separate integer variable to illustrate how variable values can be changed during program execution. I'll call it delay value and initialize it to 1000. Then I'll replace this numeric literal with a delay value variable and click upload. The program runs as expected. 1000 millisecond delay for both on time and off time of the LEDs. Then I'll alter the content of this delay value using the compound subtraction operator and subtract it with 50. So it means after every loop, 50 milliseconds will be deducted to this delay value variable and it will be applied as the time delay to our blinking LEDs. But eventually, after about 20 loops, it will reach zero, which means zero delay or no delay at all. Let's upload and verify our program. And as you can see, the LEDs start blinking at 1000 millisecond interval and as the loop continues, the delay value is reduced. Thus, the speed of the blink goes faster and faster, and after about 20 blinks, it stops. Actually, there is a much deeper explanation to this because the delay function only accepts unsigned long, which means no negative values. And based on our code, our variable delay will come to a point where it will reach negative value. And with that, let us start working with a simple conditional statement using if condition. I'll type here, if delay value is equal to 0, then I'll reset the delay value to 1000. I'll click Upload and try to observe what happens. The LEDs start blinking at 1000 milliseconds interval and as the loop continues, the delay value is reduced, making the blink rate faster. And after about 20 loops, the delay value is reset to 1000, and the loop continues. And that's it! We have successfully created our first Arduino program with the use of some built-in functions, variables, simple arithmetic operations, and conditions to control three LEDs connected to our digital output pins. And now, for your code and circuit connection challenge, I want you to add one more LED it doesn't matter what digital pin you use. I just want you to practice your programming skills by creating a program that will perform this operation. LED1 will light, followed by LED2, followed by LED3, then LED4. Then, repeat the process. As the loop continues, the delay gets faster and faster until it reaches zero. Then it blinks and it resets the operation. You can use any delay value as you want. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. So for our next topic, we will discuss how to work with digital input and output plus more conditional and duping statements. And again, thanks for watching. And I hope you learned something of value here. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button for more programming and circuit tutorials. See you in the next video.